Hi everyone, welcome to my class. Today we are going to discuss digital modulation part one, introduction. So the learning outcomes are, at the end of this course, you will be able to know the operation of digital modulation system and digital communication. Okay. How can be analog signal converted to digital, means analog to digital conversion, conversion and uh, pulse modulation in analog domain. Different, different types of pulse modulation. So let us uh, view a overview of digital communication or digital systems. So digital communication system, uh, there are two branches continuous or analog and digital. So analog use continuous wave, whereas digital use the digitized wave or discrete values. Now, in continuous wave or analog wave, there are modulation used are amplitude modulation and analog angle modulation. Angle modulation, there are two categories, frequency modulation and phase modulation. Whereas, this we have already completed. And the right side, the digital uh, modulation using digital wave or signal, that is focus of our lesson. Now, there are two types in digital uh, modulation, pulse modulation and digital modulation. Pulse modulation actually pre-processing the signal before or prior to doing digital modulation. This is in amplitude domain. Okay, so in details, the modulation types, continuous wave modulation, amplitude modulation, angle modulation. In angle, there are frequency modulation, phase modulation. Okay, we have completed. In digital modulation, there are digital modulation and analog modulation. Analog is the, um, there are three types, pulse amplitude modulation, pulse duration or width modulation, and pulse position modulation. They go together. Okay. Whereas digital modulation is pulse code modulation, the main one. Okay. Now, why do we need digital modulation or digital communication system or we can say why we are going towards digital or digitization so demand for communication service increases but our radio frequency is the same it's limited a spectrum is limited so we need some efficient way to convert the data through radio frequency to optimize the channel and increase the number of users. Besides, power efficiency, bandwidth efficiency, and system complexity are the main concern for choosing a modulation technique. Okay. Besides, digital modul modulation schemes have greater capacity to convey large amount of information than analog modulation systems. So these are the um, advantages um, for which we are going towards digital systems. Uh, one more thing, in digital system, okay, or communication, digital communication system, the system can be reprogrammed as per needed without throwing the old hardware to uh, enjoy the new updates. Whereas in analog, uh, it's not possible. One more, with aging, analog system performance usually go downwards. Whereas the digital system's performance remains the same okay, until it breaks down. Okay. Now in digital communication, uh, little bit history. In the early 90s, telecommunication networks it's changed towards digital world. Okay. And this one even more fast means take place in a faster way with the rapid advancement in the field of digital 
uh, devices and system like VLSI, microprocessor, uh, telecommunication components, transmission line and switching, etc. Okay. Therefore, the information available signals are analog need to be converted or changed to digital form from analog so that it can be used for transmission or communication. Okay. And then RFA spectra must be shared though there are demand of users increasing day by day. And as a result, demand of communication services also increasing. Digital modulation scheme has greater capacity, as we mentioned, compared to analog to convey a large amount of information in the shorter time period. So uh, this is a uh, comparison between analog and digital modulation. So here, bandwidth requirement in analog is less, whereas for digital, it is um, much more than the analog. Okay, so analog is more accurate because there is no intermediate or pre-processing of signal and all the available analog signals can be used as it is. Whereas digital is little bit less accurate due to uh, the conversion of analog signal to digital first prior to use for a communication or transmission. Okay. But noise immunity is much better in digital compared to analog. Security level also here higher, okay, because can use encryption, authentication, etc. Um, then no signal conditioning or processing are used here, whereas in complex it is used, okay, um, coding, encryption, equalization to reduce the uh, signal loss or error even for better performance. Okay, quality of service also here high compared to the analog, very slow. And in analog, usually frequency revision multiplexing is used, FDM. Okay, whereas here, besides FDM, time division multiplexing, code division multiplexing, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing also can be used. For mobile communication, analog only supports the voice communication, but data not possible, whereas it is possible, SMS, data, image, video, uh, transmission, okay, is possible for digital. Okay, so uh, again, just some uh, recap of uh, advantages of digital communication because uh, it's noise, it has noise immunity, okay, uh, store and processing of data is easy in terms of ROM, computer, RAM, DSP, okay, regeneration of data is possible, reprogrammable also possible, okay easy to handle, can encrypt the data to um, employ more secured security or for a secure system. Data from several sources can be integrated and transmitted in terms of multiplexing, okay, and in the same communication channel. And error connection and detection can be utilized at the receiver side. Whereas disadvantage, the bandwidth requirement is a bit bigger, bigger. Analog signal, all the sources of uh, natural signal are analog. They should be uh, converted to digital first before using. So need to add analog to digital um, converter or encoding and digital to analog converter in the circuit. So circuit is a bit complex. Delay is a little bit more. Okay. Complexity is a little bit more. Okay. Uh, so error also a little bit more compared to uh, analog. But if not comp compatible with analog, we cannot interface two systems together. One more thing, the digital communication needs synchronization for um, recovery the signal accurately. Okay, let us see the block diagram. Okay, 
So this uh, for the digital communication, here is the source. Okay, source encoder, channel encoder, digital modulation, this is inside transmitter. Then the data should be transmitted to the channel and at the receiver side, just the reverse uh, operation as transmitter. Okay, this is more detail uh, for the modulation. So analog source, analog to digital converter because we have to convert the data to digital or discrete before uh, using for uh, digital communication system. Okay, so they are source encoder, channel encoder, modulator, the together at the transmitter, uh, the digital modulation. Okay, then before uh, pushing the data to channel, need to amplify the power. Okay? And uh, at the receiver side, so no noise and and noise amplifier, demodulator, channel decoder, source decoder. And then if the user is digital user, data can be directly um, uh, transferred to the user. Otherwise, it should go through digital to analog converter in case the user is in. Okay, here we can see the analog communication system and uh, digital communication system, just a brief, to see the difference. So analog input modulate, modulator is the digital modul, uh, analog modulation, transmission channel, demodulation, and then analog out, output to the same or to the user. In digital communication, the analog input inputs is the same, need the additional ADC, analog to digital converter and encoder. Then it should go through the modem, then transmission channel. Here, um, also the modem to, uh, demo uh, means decode the data and then um, through ADC to convert analog and digital to analog and decode then the data can be um, transferred or uh, to the uh, sink or to the end users okay data can be delivered to the end users okay in a detail okay the closure look of um, digital transmission system more emphasis on uh, modulation, digital modulation. So analog source, analog to digital conversion. There are three types. It can be done because the we say the pulse modulation. So there are three pulse width modulation, pulse position modulation, pulse amplitude modulation. Okay, this is in analog domain. Then this can be encoded with pulse code modulation or delta modulation. This data is now in a digital domain. After pulse code modulation, this data can be passed to the modulator, digital modulator. Here is sense source encoder and channel encoder. So there can be the line coding and binary modulation. After power amplifier, this one can be transmitted to the channel. The, but the receiver side does the reverse, okay, opposite of that. Okay. Now, since there are three types of modulation in analog domain, means to pre-process the analog signal to make it discrete so that we can convert in terms of digital data. So there are uh, three different types of modulation. We say analog modulation or pulse modulation. So pulse modulation is there are three, pulse amplitude modulation, pulse um, width modulation, sometimes it is known as pulse duration modulation, okay, or pulse time modulation is DM. And then pulse position modulation. These two actually are related to each other. Okay. So uh, let us see, since there are three, what are the difference between the three? So here, yeah, this is a modulating uh, signal or the uh, continuous signal. Now, the pulse ampli amplitude modulation, it just um, capture the amplitude or the amplitude level of the signal with the clock frequency. So suppose, here, you can see there, depending on the amplitude, here amplitude high, this one is high and low. Here is low, so is the negative side. 
whereas the pulse width modulation because pulse amplitude modulation is vary with the amplitude variation of the information signal whereas pulse width modulation the width of the captured uh, pulse depends on the variation of the amplitude so here is the width is not highest so it's like that it depends on the how is the amplitude level here is the highest so the width is more okay and less here is the lowest the lowest one okay so this is the pulse width modulation whereas what is pulse position modulation pulse position modulation it depends as uh, fixed width fixed width pulse captured depending on the position okay on the position uh, how far is it it is and also the width. So let us uh, relate this one with path width modulation. So first positive pulse will be captured at the beginning of the width. So here is the width, this is a positive. Where this one is end, this one is a negative. Next, where this one, the width is started taking a, uh, capturing a pulse, this one is positive this one negative so it depends okay is the amplitude higher this position will be this um will be higher amplitude low this one will be low. you can see for the lowest this is the beginning this is the end so it's two course okay and then pulse code modulation we'll discuss detail letters so it depends on the amplitude or how many bit we are using to convert this one um as a digital data from discrete so now so pulse modulation they are analog pulse modulation means converting the continuous information signal to discrete level in terms of pulse amplitude modulation pump pulse width modulation or pulse position modulation and then converting this one to um, binary okay some label and then binary value using digital pulse modulation. Okay, that one can be PCM, pulse code modulation, and delta modulation. So amplitude modulation, as I mentioned, capturing or sampling the amplitude level uh, from the information signal, which is continuous. Okay, and then we have to maintain the sampling rate means how frequently we will capture the sample so this is a analog pulse or the continuous information signal this is our pulse means clock clock frequency or clock pulse so we'll get a sample here sample here sample here sample you can see they are equally spaced means the time duration is equal so this one and this one going to the multiplier. This is a switch, sampling switch, we can see. So on, it will capture off. On means there is a pulse. Off, there is the idle period, okay? So uh, it will not take. So you can see this signal after capturing uh, the samples with a uh, equally spaced interval, this one can like become like that. So this is one first sample, second sample, third sample. So the amplitude of the constant width, this width are constant because this one is constant, constant width, position also is varied according to the amplitude of the information signal. Okay, so that's the sampling. Now, um, how we do using the sampling switch this is the uh, block diagram of the sampling switch so analog signal is coming in there is the end gate and this is the pulse at sampling frequency of clock clock frequency this pulse amplitude modulation so pulse shaping network then um that's the frequency modulation modulator so pump afm we include the high frequency so that signal can travel through the channel. So high frequency carrier oscillation we are giving here. So, okay, again, for this, if we take three samples, capture three samples from here, 
first, depending on the label. This is the highest level. This is the level is this. So they are the same. Here is negative. First level is this. This is the lowest level. This is the level. This is the amplitude modulated signal, AM signal. Okay. It's discrete, but these values are discrete, still is not uh, integer. It is decimal values. So we can't say um, this one, this digitalized A. So with modulation, the same like pulse amplitude modulation, okay, as I mentioned, the width of the captured um, signal or the sampling signal depends on the amplitude level of the information signal, okay? This is the pulse with modulated uh, pulses, uh, still in um, decimal values. Position modulation, as I mentioned, suppose this one, what is the distance of this amplitude? So this, this one the highest, right? So this one will be further. This one, okay. Or it will go through at the beginning and at the end of each um, width sampling, okay? So this is PPM and PWM. They are uh, actually go together. This is the clip. This can be expressed in some other form also. Okay, now comparison of the three, PAM, PWM, and PPM at a glance. So this is the information signal, continuous analog signal. PAM is taking the amplitude level only, the value of the amplitude level, whereas uh, PWM is taking the sample, with variation width, here yeah, variation amplitude in PAM. In PWM, variation in terms of width, depending on the amplitude of the uh, information signal. Whereas position, this one depends on the PWM and it varies with the width of the sample, sample value, okay? That, that's the three in a glance. Now, Next one is pulse code modulation. So for pulse code modulation is PCM. This is means the analog signal or discrete signal um, captured or sampled, and then it's in terms of PAM, PWM, or um, pulse position modulation, PPM, to convert that into digital binary bits okay in terms of a code so this is the pulse code modulation here are three uh, actually three steps to do pulse code modulation or analog to digital conversion first sampling this is actually stage one is the analog domain state one is the either pump pwm or ppm okay Stage one is sampling. Stage two is quantization, means distributing this value in terms of discrete labels with the integer. And then convert this label in terms of binary bits. This is, we say, encoding. Okay, this is encoding. So there are three steps, sampling, quantization, and encoding. Sampling is the process of generating pulses of very um, less width, eh? almost zero. Cannot be exactly zero, but almost zero width. And taking the amplitude, this one we are uh, doing here, pump, taking the amplitude for pump, taking the width variation for pulse width modulation, and taking the position variation for pulse. Uh, with the sampling rate. And then quantization is the process of dividing the maximum values of the analog signal into a fixed number of levels. Because it's discrete, infinitely many uh, levels, but we can convert in terms of a uh, finite levels, which is, we can handle easily, okay? To convert means, uh, to convert towards binary code. So 
the labels are known as quantization labels. Okay. And then these values can be converted in terms of binary bits. Okay. So that one is totally three is uh, together three is PCMA pulse code modulation. But again, um, to recap, but step one sampling is the analog domain. That one can be pump, PWM or PPM. Okay, now digital signal is described by bitrate, whereas analog signal is described by the frequency. Bitrate means bit per second, whereas in analog we say hertz in terms of hertz, kilohertz, megahertz. So what is bitrate? What is sampling rate? Multiply number of bits per sample. So we'll see uh, now in details. So PCM three steps: sampling, quantization, and coding. Okay, as we discussed, this is the block diagram of PCM. Okay, first analog signal, then to filter out unwanted frequencies. So it should go through the low pass filter, okay, to get the maximum frequency of the analog signal. Then sampling, quantization, encoding, and then through the channel, okay, means channel coding, um, source coding channel coding and then uh, pass through the channel then at the receiver decoder okay expander it will go through again low pass filter because if there is any other unwanted uh, frequencies to um, you know filter out those and then actual analog signal to the destination okay so sampling uh, we know periodically capture the value if pump and the amplitude level of the original signal okay uh, with a constant amplitude pulses in terms of quantization rounding off the amplitude okay and then make them into some levels which can be manageable encoding determine the code of binary for each pump signal based on the labels and convert them in terms of binary bits. Okay, so how fast we'll take the sample? That one is a very sensitive issue. So samples should be sufficient. Otherwise, the original signal cannot be reconstructed at the receiver. So sampling theorem, uh, from the scientist Nyquist in terms of Nyquist theorem, the sampling rate should be at least twice of the frequency of information signal or more than that. Okay, so in terms of Nyquist rate or Nyquist theory, Fs, Fs is the sampling frequency, must be greater than or equals to Fm. This is the information signal frequency, but here F max means what is the maximum frequency involved in the signal. Okay, that. Okay. So again, sampling frequency must be at least means minimum sampling frequency will be twice the highest analog frequency. Okay. Uh, this one to F max or to Fm, how we say. But usually in practice, if this is the minimum, it used 2.5 times or three times than the Nyquist minimum rate. Okay, now let us see sampling. How the sampling? This is one information signal, continuous signal. Okay, F equals one by T, we know. So this period is T. Okay, so how the sampling frequency? Sampling we are taking in an equal interval with a fixed width length, just instant, eh? very, very less width for this each sample. Okay? So these are samples. Sample means we are taking the amplitude level, eh? this level we are taking, okay? of the original signal, sampling. Okay, so it means voltage level or amplitude level. And then that one is still continuous in analog domain, why they are in terms of um, not integer, fractional value eh? okay and this is the sampling interval or time interval and 
what is this time for the tiny time? This is the sampling time. Okay, K is sampling time, but this one is sampling interval. Sampling interval must be greater, greater than uh, sampling time. Okay, so there are two types of sampling. Natural sampling and flat top sampling. Natural just captures the signal as it is. While as just cut off some part of the signal to make the top flat. Let us see in terms of example. Okay, this is the continuous information signal. This is the clock frequency when we are capturing the signal. Uh, actually, this is shown here is a longer period, but this is very, very, it will be tiny, very less. So for this, the signal is like that. So we are taking the signal amplitude level as it is. Okay, this is natural sample. Whereas here is the comparison. This is the information signal. This is the clock frequency. This is the sampling interval Ts. And this is tau is the sampling time and tau very, very less than Ts as I mentioned before. So when you are taking the amplitude level of the signal as it is, according to the original signal, this is the natural sampling. Whereas for the same frequency, when we are cutting off the top, making it flat, this is flat top sample. Okay. Uh, to do the pitch, PCM, pulse code modulation, usually uh, we can't use the natural sampling, we use the flat top sampling. Okay, quantization, quantization, because I'm recapping here, the values will be in a range. It's, there are many because it's the decimal values. So from, from decimal point one point one, there will be infinitely many steps. Okay, May, uh, means many levels of the values. Uh, we have to make it finite so that we can handle easily. So the amplitude of the samples are then divided into finite levels. Okay, number of levels depends on the um, number of bits we want to use to code or to convert in terms of digital binary digits. For example, if we want to use number of bits B, the number of label M or L will be two to the power B. Okay, okay. so more labels, bits will be more. It will be complicated, but accuracy will be more. Okay. Keep in mind. Okay. After that, encoding. Encoding means after the levels, we get the level value from amplitude, sampled amplitude, which is uh, continuous or decimal values. Make it in terms of levels, integers. Okay, finite levels uh, with in terms of integer values, and then that level values, integer values should be contact converted in terms of bits, okay? So how we can get from the previous actually formula, m equals two to the power b, b means log m base two. So we can convert in terms of binary bits. This is encoding the final stage, okay? And now let us see some example. Suppose this is one original signal. This signal, okay, um, we use three bits. Yeah, you can see three, three. So two to the power three means eight level. So levels should be started from zero. Since there are eight levels, zero to seven. Okay, the highest value and the lowest value, right? this will be all uh, means in terms of this eight level, all will be converted in terms of this eight level. And now zero means usually we know for three bits, zero, zero, zero. One means, 0, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, and so on. So for each value of the signal where we captured like that, this value is 2. 2 means, uh, sorry, this this um, value first, first is here. So this one, um, how is this value is coming all is in terms of that. So first one is, um, the value here, here in this region means this one three. So if this one in this region three, three means zero one one. Okay, so the code is zero one one. 
next one is here in this region two two means zero one zero okay next in the in the steps there are the levels level one one means zero zero one okay and so on this we will discuss more details after this now let us see how is this sampling quantization and encoding so this is one signal we have sampling these are the sampling intervals and taking the samples so if we are taking the samples it should be converted in terms of levels for example for three bits just now we have seen two to the power three there are eight levels zero to seven okay zero to seven eight levels so within that first level is this this one is two two means zero one zero these are the levels eh? um in terms of binary bits coding code in terms of uh levels okay so for two means zero one zero so this one will be converted zero one zero see this one for the one sample this one sample is converted in terms of because we are using three bits so zero one zero this one the value is five five means what is the value one zero one so this one is one zero one second sample third sample is six six means one one zero so one one all upper level and voltage zero is the low level okay one one zero this is the binary code and this is in terms of voltage level who is can travel through the line okay here is seven means one 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 all one 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 this is one sample okay and so on so one sample means three bits so this how we can uh, see in a glance the sampling quantization in terms of level and um actually connect them with the code level and code they are related to each other so relate them in terms of code and then each sample convert in terms of binary bits in the code line code okay so now let us see the bandwidth and information capacity so usually uh, information capacity of a communication system means the number of independent symbols that can be carried through the system in a given unit of time okay or transmitted through the system so in terms of shannon limit there is a maximum capability that system can handle after that system unable to uh, transmit or handle more than that data bit okay or data rate so uh, what is the shannon limit let us see it is relationship between the information capacity and the uh, signal bandwidth along with signal to noise ratio means what is the noise in the environment or in the system so information capacity i equals b b is the bandwidth in terms of hertz of the system log base 2 because this is binary system 1 plus SOVN. SOVN means signal um, to power ratio. Okay, signal uh, power divided by noise power, the ratio. Okay, this is known as SNR, signal to noise ratio. And uh, actually, if we convert to log 10, because log 2 is uh, sometimes difficult to handle, the value will be 3.32 B log 10 1 plus S5. So let us see one example of the information capacity. So a standard voice band communication channel um, channels have a signal to noise ratio power of 1000 watt. And signal to noise ratio. So this is 1000. 1000 means 30 dB because SNR is signal power by noise power. So it's unitless. And the signal bandwidth of 2.6 7 kilohertz determine the information capacity so from the relation here we easily know i equals 3.32 b b is 2.7 kilohertz log 2 1 plus s by n is given 1000 
So we can calculate 26.9 kilobit per second. This is the maximum capacity of the system. Okay, now some um, of the definitions, but or the bud rate. What is bud? Bud and symbol rate are the same. Okay, bud rate and symbol rate. What is bud? Rate of change of signal on the transmission medium after encoding and modulation have occurred. So it's symbols per second. Uh, rate of change of output of means of the modulator. That one is bad. Now, since they're same, what is symbol rate? Also known as bad or modulation rate. Okay? Uh, is the number of symbols change signaling events made to the transmission medium per unit time. Okay. Now, symbol rate, what is bit rate then? Bit rate, symbol rate in terms of symbol. Bit rate should be in terms of bit. Bit rate is um, sometimes written bit rate or data rate or the variable R or FB. Okay? So the number of bits convey or process per unit of time or transfer per unit. So FB equals FSN. What is FS? FN is the symbol rate. Okay? Or the symbol frequency. So symbol rate, multiplication n, what is the n? How many bits are there per one symbol? So each symbol can be represented or conveyed one or several bit of data, okay? Because they are binary usually in digital communication used, binary signals for high voltage one, logic one, and for low voltage along with logic zero. So let me show uh, this one again. We have seen one symbol here. One symbol is represented by three bits, right? So n is three. So bit rate will be three multiplication the symbol rate. Okay. So uh, just summary. Uh, we have almost finished the introduction. So communication system. There are two uh, variations: analog and digital. Analog handle and continuous waves. They are um, in terms of modulation, two types of modulation, amplitude modulation, AM, and angle modulation. Uh, this we have already finished. Whereas for digital wave or uh, binary data, there are uh, actually pulse modulation, pulse modulation in analog domain, PAM, PWM, PPM, and then convert that one this is still the uh, fractional value or decimal value in terms of, so we say it's still analog, not totally digital. To convert that one into digital, you have to go through PCM. So PCM first stage is this, then there are three stages, okay? Sampling, sampling is this, and then um, quantization and encoding okay that too and then after that it will go to digital modulation system okay to uh, do the digital modulation before the signal going to the channel so there are three sk f i mean amplitude shift gain phase shift gain and frequency shift gain okay and then the data can be multiplexed in using a uh, multiplexing system or device means multiplexer. So multiplexing means frequency division multiplexing, time division multiplexing, uh, wavelength division multiplexing, this one used for optical communication, okay, or code division multiple uh, multiplexing. And then this one will go to the channel. So next, for next lesson, we'll focus more on PCM, pulse code modulation, how we can do that. In the exact or detailed procedure. Um, that's all. Stay tuned. Thank you.